office of this morning. Oh, Close in our right mind. We take it all for traveling mercy. We thank you, oh God, for being God in our life, the ways you made, the doors you opened. We thank you, God, for saving our souls. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness for our many, many sins. Oh God, we thank you for the shortcomings. God, we thank you for new mercy today, God. We thank you, God. There's none like you today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this house of prayer, oh God. How you allowed us to come in, oh God. We come to worship you, Lord. We come to give you the praise. We come to give you the holy hand. God, we thank you, oh God, for new life, God. We thank you for forgiveness one more time. We thank you, oh God, for a new mindset, God, turning us around, God, on the street called spring. God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mighty acts. We thank you how you healed our sick, oh God. How you covered the hearts, oh God, of the lonely, God. How you regulated confused minds, oh God. How you saved the lost, yes, Lord. In the mighty name of God. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your wonderful works in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your sweetness, God. Yes, You're so sweet, Lord. You're wonderful. Yes, Lord. You're marvelous Lord. in our lives, God. And we thank you, God. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the praise, oh God. Look on us today, God. As we gather, Lord, we're inviting the Holy Ghost, Lord, in this place. God, come in the room, Lord. Saturate us again, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Fear the void, oh God. Fear the void in our lives. The void in our hearts. The void in our minds. Take down confusion. Down, oh God. Cast it out, Lord. Disappointment, hurt. Cast it out, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help us just lean heavy on you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for all things. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord. You alone are worthy. You are worthy today, God. Yes, now, God. That you have your mighty way. Have your way in this place. Have your way, oh God. Take us again, oh God. Renew the strength and joy again, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Double portion, God. Devil anointing God, Hallelujah. each individual anointed for Christ, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hey, oh God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all things. Thank you for everything. You are all the worthy. We give you the glory, Lord. Continue to bless our leader, Lord. Touch him now, God. From the soles of his feet to the crown of his head, Lord. Grant him double strength, oh God, as only you can. And we continue to give you the Praise the glory of God. It all belongs to you in Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depth. Experiences yes. together, and I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for what the Lord has yes, done, Lord. and yes, He has blessed me with. At this time, I thank God for our, our sister, uh, sister Versa Eaton, that will come, uh, that, that will come at this time. Sister Versa with it, Versa Eaton with it. That's going to come at this time, and she's going to come, and she's going to read our scripture for us this morning. Let's say Amen for a few seconds. 
Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Yes. Attend to my prayer. Yes. From the end of the earth will I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of the wings. I have read Psalm 61, the word of God for the people of God. Yes. I'm going to trust in the Lord yes. and, and until I die. Thank God for the scripture reading Lord. and also for our prayer on this morning. Yes. I believe that God is up to something. Yes, sir. What do y'all say about it? I believe God is up to something. Yes. Amen. God is still moving in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. And we give him praise and we give him glory. Hallelujah. For what he's already done, what he's doing right now, I'll take a praise go right there. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Nobody, nobody do you like the Lord. Can't nobody do you like Jesus and we're grateful for what the Lord has done for us. That's all right. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Right there on the spot. Amen. God is right now, God. Be here and answer our prayer. So we're so grateful and so wonderfully blessed on this morning just to be able to come together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Someone that started out the first part of this year is not with us at this time. But look at yourself and say, I'm still here. I'm still here by the grace of God. And by the mercy of God. Thank you for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. Somebody said you knew every morning. Great is our faithfulness. Lord, I believe. Oh, we got a reason and a right to give God the praise on the day. And we're thankful. We ask that you will continue to like and to share as we go forth in the service on today. And God knows God has been good to us. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. Glory to God. And we're praising. And we thank him for how he has brought us up into this present time. Help us say nobody but God. Nobody but God. As if we really had been left up to the enemy, many of us wouldn't be here today. But we're still here by the grace and the mercy of God. I ask that you would do it. Of course, invite somebody to join us on this morning as we go forth in the service. We're looking for the Lord to speak to our heart in a very special way. We need to hear from God. Yes, there is a word from the Lord even on today as you yes, share with us and continue to be a part of what God is doing at this particular hour. This is a Kairos moment. This is a time in which God has intervened in the process of time to get his word across to those that are needing and those that are hurting. So we thank God for each and every one of you. I uh, ask that those of you that we want to enjoy, invite you to any and all of our services here at the church and we make it our manner and our purpose to invite you to all of our services uh, to, of course, our noonday prayer that takes place each and every uh, Tuesday and Friday at the noonday hour. And you can go directly to our website address and that is www.hgocogic.com. You go to that particular address and you can tap right into our noonday prayer at the 12 noon hour on Tuesdays and Fridays. And God knows saints be praying. Intercession is going forth. And you're missing out on a treat of what God has for you. And I tell you, this is praying time. Uh, especially now that we've joined our forces and gone back to school and engaged back into some of our ordinary businesses and things. And I'm looking for God to be in the midst. Yeah. Take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. Yeah. Because somebody said, you're going to need him. Yeah. You're going to need him yeah. everywhere you go. Yeah. So be part of that service on Tuesdays and Fridays. And then, of course, on Tuesday night, we're going to be sharing in our Bible study. And God yes, knows we've had some very engaging uh, Bible studies during the week. God knows. And I thank God for the leading of the Holy Ghost because we've moved in a different direction. And sometimes yeah. people think they got God figured out uh -huh. and just know exactly how it's going to go and what's going to be discussed and how thank God going to intervene or what's going to happen. Ain't nothing going to be happening that's going to be regular. But sometimes God intervenes just when you don't expect him to. God moves in a special way because after all, we are led by the Spirit of God. And those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. So I'm, I claim my, my ownership. I claim my position as a son of God. And God leads us and directs us. And God knows I enjoy the, se the session on Tuesday night. 
It's a little bit different from what we normally approach it. But I'm grateful for what the Lord has done. And that was that was much needed. And as we look at that, and of course, we are all hurting in one area or another. But God has a way that's mighty sweet. And when we yield to the presence and the spirit of God, God has a way of mending those broken hearts. Y'all don't keep it in there. God has a way of intervening in our situation. And we don't have to tell anybody else about that. But it does help when we can one or two can get together. If two or three that are gathered together in my name, he did say he would be in the midst. And God knows the Lord was in the midst on Tuesday night. Amen. I'm just saying. Glory. Hallelujah. I was benefited. I was benefited. Thank God for the saints that are praying and that are interceding one for the other. Amen. I bet you would join us on that. And that it takes place at 730. Right at that same website address, www.hpocog.com. Amen. And the Lord bless you for joining with us. And we appreciate all of your monetary gifts and uh, contributions that you've been making down through these months and years. And we do thank God for all of our, uh, we call them non-members our soft members that are throughout these United States that send their offerings in and just say, I want to encourage your heart. And I appreciate that. Amen. I thank God for the encouragement. I thank God for our, our local church, higher ground. God knows I do. But I appreciate all those that are listening. Hallelujah. And those that are saying, brother, keep on preaching. Keep on teaching. Keep on teaching. Keep on what you're doing. Hallelujah. And I hear Bishop Carl speaking to my heart this morning, mother. Don't let anybody, let nothing deter yes, you from doing what you're doing yes. when you know that what you're doing is right. Amen. I believe we're doing that which is right. What did I say? I believe we're doing that which is right. So I appreciate those. And you can do it even as I speak. Uh, we have several applications that you can use to send your monies in, and that's through the Cash App application, and that is the dollar sign CCEFC. You can send it through that medium, or you may choose to do the Givelify method uh, by which you give through the Givelify and just go right to your phone and go to the High Ground Outreach Church, and that is 132 Bank Street, right yeah. in the city of yes, Suffolk. Sir. You yes. can give your tithe and offer from there. Yes. And yes. we do encourage you to pay your tithe. Yeah. And we're living in a society now that not much pressure is put on us. We got so many ways of skirting around uh, our financial responsibilities that no one knows exactly what we are doing. But I always say, God always knows. Uh, and the Holy Ghost is never fooled. Yes, I don't care how much we might miss it, but the Holy Ghost don't ever miss it. So I say, God, I want to honor you with the first fruits of all of my increase. Yes, yes, yes. I want to give, because you say, give and it shall be given unto you. Uh -huh. Good measure. Y'all help me say, press down. Press down. Shaking together yes. and running over. That's what the word said, that, that men shall give unto your bosom. But with the same measure that you meet out, it shall be measured to you again. That's St. Luke 6 and 38. And I believe I stand on that promise. Hallelujah, that God will honor his word. And he will do just like he said he would do. So continue to give your offerings, your tithe, doing that medium. And those that's going to be sharing with us on today across the table, we'll give you an opportunity to share at a later time during this service. But we appreciate every gift, whether Amen. large or small. Amen. We're in our 24th season, our anniversary. Amen. Uh, church, of course, and pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve in ministry uh, here these last few years. And we're going to be celebrating in another service, even on next Sunday, which is uh -huh. the 17th of September with the uh, Earl of His Coming Church. They will be our special guests to help us celebrate yeah. on next Sunday. Amen. If you're invited to be a part of that as well. And I thank God for all of our ministry yeah. brothers and sisters. Yeah. Thank God for all of our Amen. Amen. Justin and all of these mothers and missionaries that are here. We don't take this for granted, but we appreciate uh, your support, your loyal support, and your prayerful support as we move forward in the service of the Lord. Uh, God has blessed us to be able to not only survive, but to thrive Amen. in these last days. Amen. It may not so seem like in numbers, so to speak, but sometimes God has a way of getting and having an impact yes. on those that you don't see every Sunday. Right. And I say this, and I say that as an older man now, that sometimes we stab, we plant seeds. And I talked about it last week just for a brief moment, mm -hmm. that old men plant seeds uh -huh. and they grow trees uh -huh. by under whose shade we may never stand. Uh -huh. So I took that for, I said, just keep planting seeds. Because the scripture says one planet and another water, but who does the increase? God gives the increase. And I've come to the conclusion that as long as God get the glory, I don't care who get the credit. So we're planting seeds, we're throwing seeds out there, and we're, we're growing people up and maturing people, mother, and to the point that they're able to share with other people. 
and they're going to produce some shade and other people will be under the, the stand under the wisdom and the instruction of those that planted the seed. Amen. So keep on planting. Look at your neighbor and tell them, keep on planting. You're going to grow some trees out the wild and they're going to provide some shade for somebody that will be able to live under the wisdom of your word. And that's what our goal, our assignment is at this particular time. And we appreciate what the Lord has allowed us to do. And I'm encouraged. And I told him just this past week, and I'm going to share with you in a few moments that I've got about 30 more years to do. I looked at my 100-year-old aunt, and I was able to share with her on yesterday. And God knows that she ain't a feisty somebody at this age, at her advanced age. And she looked, she said, I don't know how old I'm. They say I'm old, but I don't feel old. I feel like shouting right now. I said, look out, man. God, help me whatever she got, I want it. Amen. So it's not over. Help me say it's not over until God says it's over. And I say, I appreciate your attitude. You got that not giving up attitude. And I'm telling you, we were trying to help her on yesterday. And her son was trying to help her. Amen. I'm not telling on her, but I'm just explaining what was going on. In the midst that she was trying to, trying to say, Mama, use this and use the walker. She put the walker behind her, dragging the walker. I said, What is she say? I'm not going to give the devil no credit. He belongs behind me. Right. Nothing wrong with the walker. Don't misunderstand me. Yes, but that's her attitude. Right. After all of the things that she had to endure, uh -huh. she said, I'm still going to claim my victory. Yes. So I say, look at you. I say, look at God. Uh -huh. I say, God, continue to bless her for her attitude. Yes. And I say, if she can do that at her advanced age, yes. what's my problem? Yes. What is wrong with me? <laughs> so I said, thank you for your inspiration. And we are, we are, we are encouraged and we thank God for all of our mature saints. And we want you to keep on going. God got work for you. It's not over. Don't ever feel like you've done enough and it's enough done. You can just sit down and cross your leg. But God has you here for a reason. He spared you for such a time as this that you can pull back into the generation that's coming on before. So let's celebrate our more senior members. Amen. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there with the help of the Lord and God is helping me to get there. Uh, we help him redefine what really the older saints we used to call old, 70, 80, and 90 years old. But these folks are doing marvelous work. Y'all don't hear me today. I say, God, help me to do better than what I'm doing. But God has something that's mighty sweet in store for us. So keep those announcements in mind and judge yourselves accordingly. I'm going to share with you uh, for the next remaining moments of yes, what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you with. And we encourage each and every one of you, don't give up. Amen. Amen. You have a charge to keep. And I'm listening to myself. And God was speaking to me on last week. I've got a charge to keep. Yes, a charge to keep I have from God to glorify. Yes, so we cannot afford to give up now. Right. And afford the luxury of laying back down and saying enough done. Oh, it's just the time that we got to press on again. It's just the time that we got to put forth a better effort than what we've been doing. Y'all listening to me today. Amen. And I'm praying for my sisters and brothers. I'm praying for that the Lord would save them and that the Lord would deliver them. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. Right. And that is my contention that we're trying to help us along the way. Amen. That God would encourage your heart. We're praying for our South American brothers and sisters, yes. and we always try to mention them during the course of our segment because they're listening and they're looking for something that God, they're asking God for more. Yes. And I want to believe that God is going to give them the more that they desire. Right. Yes. So keep them in your prayers. We do say bonus deals to you each and every Sunday morning. The Lord allows us to share with you. Yes. And I know they may, you may not see them, but they're listening, they're watching. Yes. And we are influenced and we have an impact. Yes. Even when you don't think you're having an impact. Right. They're watching and watching your manner. Right. You are, you help me say, you are an influencer. You are an influencer. Whether you want to recognize it or not. It doesn't have to be on TikTok, don't That's have right. to be on Instagram, but folks watch your life. That's and right. when they watch your life, we end up, you got to make sure that you're doing as God has so prescribed for you to do. Right. So keep those things in mind as you move forward uh, in this last day. I ask that everyone will please stand for the next few moments, and uh, we're going to begin sharing with you yes, what the Lord in our heart. And we're so thankful for the Sunday school. I, I'm, still, I'm still learning in Sunday school. And I was telling them the other day that I, I really got saved showing up in Sunday school. I know I gave God my life and God came in and God blessed them and filled me with the Holy Ghost. But I went to Sunday school because that's what they told me I needed to do. And I didn't, I didn't have it all yet. I need to go and get some instruction. And that has stuck with me these last 50 plus years. That Sunday school is important. It is an educational teaching arm of our our church Amen. and I appreciate the wisdom that's shared during that just short segment Amen. on Sunday morning. 
Yes. It's a precursor. It's a it's a jump starter yes, sir. for service. Yes, <laughs> and when you get in the mode and get into that attitude, it helps you during the course uh -huh. of the service. Right. So I ask that you would don't just disallow that, but make it a part of your curriculum. Yes. Spend some time with God. Right. And I'd say the less time equals less influence. Yes, so we got to make sure that we put our time in. Yes. And the Lord bless you for so doing. Yes. Bow your heads and humble your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, here we are once again. Hallelujah. God, we come to you on behalf of this people that have come today, God, looking for something, looking with their cups out. You know exactly what we stand in need of. Lord, we pray now that you would speak to our heart, that you would speak to our mind, that you would even now, God, do what need be done, hallelujah, in their lives. God, we place our concerns and our supplications before you yeah. even on this morning. Lord, have your way today. Let the power of the Holy Ghost rest and rule and abide upon each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you now for how you brought us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for how you kept us. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. Give your praise for all things, Lord. Now we can work together for our good. Thank you, Lord, for our life. Thank you, Lord, for our health and strength. Bless these people now. Don't let our coming be in vain. Don't let our little wedding go. Don't let it be in vain today. But God, drop your word. Hallelujah, down in our heart uh, that we might not sin against thee. Bless this people now to strive even for excellence. Give us a spirit of excellence today as we move forward in this way. Have your way today. Have your way, Lord. Have your way today. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll bless you. We'll praise you. We'll magnify you. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you all the honor. Yes, Have your way even in me. Hey, give me words to say and how to say it. Yes. Anoint me afresh with the power. Yes. Hallelujah of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Upon my life, oh God. Yes. That your word will go out and accomplish that which you said it to do. Yes. In the mighty name of yes. Jesus. Yes. And God, if you do it, we'll be so humble and so grateful yes. to give your name the praise. Yes, Be then all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Yes. And for his sake, help us say thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 God, please, as you take Amen. the seat. Amen. I would like to say that I thank God for those technicians and the persons that help us to come on the oh air each and every week. And I'm yeah. so saying it oftentimes. Amen. Amen. But it's a blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. I don't have to do all of that. It's just to be too cumbersome to try to remember to do all of that. Yeah. But God has placed yeah. us as part of the body. Yes. We all have a function to fulfill. And when we are in our lane and doing what we can to help bolster the ministry, mm -hmm. help to do what we have to do and not sitting back on our leads. Right. And just expecting someone else to do it. Right. Amen. It's time for us now. We've taken away all excuses. Oh That's what we talked about last week, didn't we? Yes, We've taken away all those excuses. Oh we knew the, all of the P's. And we talked about the five P's, didn't oh we? I won't go into detail about it now. But you, prep, you, pre, you prepare. Amen. You do proper preparation uh, for your, to prevent poor performance. Yes. You don't want any poor performance. And we try to put Amen. our best foot forward yes. when we come on the air. And we try not to waste your time because surely we don't want to waste God's time. So we thank you, thank you for your support. Thank you. Come on, technicians, and thank you for that. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, brother. Amen. And I tell you, we don't appreciate those persons that sometimes behind the scenes that people never know and they never see. But except for their help and their expertise, a lot of this would not be possible. But thank God for the help. Amen. Yes, so I'm very appreciative for that fact because uh, had it not been for you, we would be, of course, scrambling and trying to do a whole lot of things that God says would not, not, not necessary. Oh my God. I use Moses' as example as Jephro talked to Moses. Yes, to brother, and he says, you're doing too much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> if this is too much, well, you need to spread some of this stuff out. Yes. And what wisdom that came from a sheep herder over there that, that Moses was able to listen yes, to the sir. wisdom yes. that God had given Jephro and spread some of it. You place your spirit upon these 70 and let them carry the lesser master yes, and take care of that thing. Yes, that sir. principle also applied in the New Testament. Yes. As we look in the book of Acts, and I'm preaching right now. I got to get my text in a minute. 
but I'm preaching right now as they had the daily administration that of amongst the Grecians and those that were distributing yes, the food in the early church and Paul and them trying to take care, Peter and them trying to take care of everything. They said, hold up, brother, y'all doing too much. Yes, you need to appoint seven men that's full of the Holy Ghost. Y'all give me and appoint to them these matters that you can spend your time in prayer and in fasting. Amen. And it, what a blessing it was. It, it quelled the disturbance that was going on. They spread that thing out. And God began to move supernaturally. Because now we spread it out. Look at somebody, sometimes you got to spread it out. Let some other folk do some stuff, amen? You can't do everything. There is no S on your chest, brothers. Y'all don't hear me. There's no S on your chest. Those are the ministering positions. But we are helpers one of another. And we've got to learn that through the wisdom and the help of God, we got to spread some stuff out. Amen. Amen. I want you to get your Bibles, and I'm going to be going yeah, to yeah, the book yeah, of yeah. Uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter. I'm going to be dealing there for a few moments about verses four through six. I probably will end up going in that direction, but I don't know what the Holy Ghost is going to say. Uh -huh. uh, but we're going to start right there. But even as I share with you on last Sunday, and as I try to give you what the Lord has given unto me, uh -huh. and we are in the process, my assignment is to help mature the saints now at this latter stage in my life, mother. And I'm trying to say, we've gone through a lot of motions and course now God is saying, you need to revisit some things and go back and check yeah. your information and make sure we're doing as God has prescribed for us to do. Right. We're in the book of Genesis in our, our Sunday school and we're going back to the original, what God's yes, original intent was. Right. Right. And as I look at the problems that we're facing now, that most people are having that prevents them from reaching their full potential is focus. Right. Y'all help me say the problem, the problem that, prevents that prevents most people, most people from reaching their potential, reaching their potential is, focus. is focus. Hallelujah. It's yes, it's, help me say it's not your faith, it's not your faith but it's your, focus. it's your focus. We got the faith. Yes, sir. But sometimes we can get easily distracted. Yes, sir. And we can lose out on what God has for us. So we need to refocus our focus. Uh -huh. And as I seek the face of God, it is becoming more apparent to me that the problems I face and the problems that many of church in this church environment face is experiencing is not a lack of faith. Mm -hmm. We've got the faith. Faith is, y'all have me finish this, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things seen. We don't have a problem with that. And we even go a little further to verse 6, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. We understand that, don't we? Yes. But the, what the enemy does, he said, if I can keep you all focused, you don't, I don't have to worry about your faith because you can't concentrate. Uh-oh, right. I'm going to get in trouble today, but i got to do it. Right. We have a focus factor. All right. We're trying to have church with frustrated people. Oh, and I find it out. I see a lot of these folks frustrated, mad, and road raging. Yeah, hey, I'm talking about saints now. Yes, sir. I said, no, we've never had this problem. Now we've got oh. saints with sinners' problem yeah. because we are dealing with the majority of a frustrated people. Oh, my God. People that are yet living in their past and have not uh, created a future for themselves. Mm. Yeah. You got to prescribe a future for yourself. Yes. If you can't see yourself going forward, you are going to probably be relegated to your past. Yes. Hallelujah. And they are just merely existing. Opportunities lost because we got stuck in the tunnel. Yes. And sometimes failed marriages. And it does happen to marriages that are on the rocks. Yes. It happens because we're dealing with majority of a frustrated people. Uh -huh. They don't have the answers necessarily, but I do know that Jesus is the answer. Yes, Sometimes financial issues that we go through and bad decisions frustrate yes, because I made a bad decision. Yes, and I can tell you the truth that sometimes I made some bad decisions yes, because I wanted to do things my way. Yes, I had a Tony Bennett experience. I wanted to do it my way. Yes, Hallelujah, but it's got to be God's way yes, or no way at all. Yes, can you help me say God's way or no way at all? But that explains the anger and the rage that eventually seeps out against our brothers and our sisters. Yes. Tell somebody, if you don't deal with your issues, yes. it will show out in one way or another. It just has a way of creeping out at the very time you least suspect it because we'll find out we haven't dealt with our issues. But we need to draw nigh to God, yes. to the God of the Bible. Yes. People are less likely to miss the mark, and that's really what defines sin. Yes, sin God. is defined as missing the mark. Uh -huh. 
they were the more less likely to miss the mark the closer they are to God. And y'all hear me say it often times, it's hard to sin, it's hard to fornicate when you're praying. Amen. Amen. That's just the truth, man, y'all. Amen. Amen. It's hard to steal when you're talking to God. Uh -huh. It's just hard to do that because now you're in communion with God. Uh -huh. So it makes it very difficult, it, it can be very frustrating because we've missed the mark. Mm -hmm. So the church is so necessarily uh, necessary today because I love the church. I was talking on yesterday to my wife and I say, it's the spirit of the church that helped me to be who we are now. Yes, it was not the brick and the mortar, but it was the attitude that they put down in us that uh -huh. you cannot violate what God has already prescribed for you to do. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it will not work. Uh -huh. So I had to adjust myself to the attitude and the spirit of those persons that was trying to build me up. Yes, right. Those that were trying to show me that I didn't have to go the way of the world. Right. That I had to come and adhere to what God had said about it. Right. Look at somebody, we got to know what God says about it. Because sometimes you got so many voices and so many people that are speaking to you. And you've got to be careful of who you allow in your circle. Amen. Because there can be some very negative things that they can try to pour into right, you. Right. But you got to reject that and stick to what God has said. Okay. So the church is so necessary today because it defines our gray areas. Y'all yes, with me? Yes, sir. But people don't like to be exposed. Uh -huh. And that is my primary job, to expose oh, the God. devil. Somebody said, tell the truth and shame the devil. That's what I'm in the business of doing. I'm so mad at him. I told somebody the other day, I'm so sick of him, I don't know what to do. And we got to get tired of him uh, and all of his devices and all of his strategies. But ask yourself the question, what do I spend the most, the majority of my time on? So when I ask myself the question, what I spend the majority of my time on, it almost clearly defines of what I will become. So we've got to be very careful. Yes. If we were to be honest with ourselves, we would have to admit that it is not the church. Uh huh. Because we don't spend a whole lot of time in the church. Right. But yet and still, the church gets most of the blame. Yes, it does. Ask me how I know. Uh -huh. That's why folk leave, because they get frustrated yeah. and they blame the church yeah. for their lack of, uh, lack yeah. of consistency. Right. Uh -huh. right. I'm just talking to leaders. I'm talking to folk that's been in the uh -huh. church for a while. Yeah. But help me say, it's a focus factor. It's a focus factor. And all the preaching in the world is not going to help you if you do not change your focus. Uh -huh. And I'll say that again. All all the preaching in the world, and we've been yeah, preaching for yeah. 24 plus years, yeah, but all the preaching in the world, I've heard some good sermons and some good messages yeah, that yeah. I will never forget, uh -huh. but it will never change if I do not change my focus. Uh -huh. So the enemy is so cunning, and I was praying this morning as I got in a little late and I was praying, I was, it's so cunning, he knows that people are easily distracted. Yes, yeah. I'm going to give you a scripture in a few moments. It does not really take a whole lot now for you to get distracted. Y'all notice that y'all attention span is not as great as it used to be. <laughs> Amen. You get distracted very easily. We got so much going on. We're on the phone. We're listening to the TV. We're listening to the radio. How do we know what is being said? But we're so easily, and our attention span has been shortened to the enemy. Say, I'm going to use that against them. So he, can, he will create a seemingly harmless situation. Yes. Oh situation and have you thinking that you are doing the right thing uh -huh. and cause you to miss out on what God has for you in order for you to grow. Mm -hmm. He'll cause you to miss it. And when you are, when are you going to get to some, some word in you? And I have to ask the question, when are you going to get some word in you? We got all these other things that are going on simultaneously. Thank you. I uh, got all these other things that are going on. And how are we going to get some word in you? Right. Now, they have a term, and I want to share this with you, and this is not my original thought, but I heard it somewhere else. I can't define where I heard it from, but they have a term now that they have discovered that is called quiet quitting. Mm -hmm. Quiet quitting. So how do you quit quietly? Now, let me try to see it make plain and make this clear. What does that actually mean, quiet quitting? Mm -hmm. It means that I have quit trying or engaging, but I appear to be yet involved. Uh -huh. That's good. Oh, so I really quit, but I want to make you think, or make everybody else think, that I'm still, uh oh, I'm getting in trouble oh, here. I'm still engaged. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, you, you, you're not fooling anybody. Mm -hmm. They are R.I.P. Mm -hmm. 
And let me explain myself. And most of y'all say, when you see RIP, what do y'all say? Rest in peace. But I got a new RIP. All right. Now, it means, many in that sense means rest in peace. But in this sense, and for the sake of my argument, it means retire in place. So, how do you retire in place? Ask me how I know. How do you know? You've got people that are already contemplating and have scheduled their vacation. They're on the job consistently. They're there, but they've got vacation on their mind. Yeah. They have ceased production. Yeah. Mm. Amen. But they're yeah. still on the clock. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you talking right about us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They have seen, I ask because I done. Mm. I'd be so ready to go on vacation yeah. after dealing with all of the frustrations and yeah. the things that come with work sometimes. I retire in place. Yes. There are folks that are on the retirement road. They got their retirement date set. Uh -huh. And they know that they're going to be retiring in December. But they stop working in September. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. R.I.P. Retired in place. Uh -huh. Still at the computer, still at the desk, still on the clock, but disengaged. Uh -huh. yes, sir. No yes, production sir. is coming yes, from that particular way. And we've all been exposed to that in one way or another. Yes. But I know that that production level has basically ceased. Mm -hmm. So how do I relate this to the church? They have already, in their mind, they're already on vacation. Uh -huh. And there's nothing wrong with vacation. Don't misunderstand right. me. But if you're on the job, you're expected to be productive, aren't you? Yes, sir. So I'm saying if you're in the church, and I relate it to this, you are expected to be a part of what the church is doing. You are expected to get engaged in at least some facet of the church. You cannot uh, quit, quiet, quit. And still... <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot quiet quit and be a part of what God is doing. Folks do church the same way that I talked about in the secular sense. Disengage. There is no so there is so much work to be done, but many souls are to be reached. But we say I'm already occupied. I don't have time for this. No fellowship, no prayer, no Bible study. You are all IP. You've retired in place. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And I've come to the conclusion. Y'all get real quiet over now. But I don't want to retire in place. Uh -huh. I got work to do. Let me say, I've got work to do. I've got work to do. I talked to Bishop Hankins and oftentimes he said, my wife told me, said, you got work to do. And he's doing the work. He's a busy person. I said, God knows you're busy. So I say, well, you got work to do. Guess what? I got work to do uh -huh. too. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got work to do. You got work to do. So I'm saying, don't allow the enemy to get the advantage over you. Now, Paul says it this way. Let me give you this scripture. 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 11. Uh-huh. Take your time. Now. I want to read that in your hearing. Uh-huh. Now, Paul recognized that there was an issue, didn't he? Uh-huh. And he says in that second chapter of 2 Corinthians 11, lest Satan uh -huh. should get an advantage of us. Uh-huh. And he knows what we like. Yes, sir. He knows how to get us to feel comfortable yes. than doing the things or less things as possibly we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So he says, lest he should get the advantage of us. Uh -huh. For we are not ignorant. That's this right. is the King James Version uh -huh. of his devices. That's right. So you got to know that the enemy has changed his strategy. Uh -huh. He's not going to get you to drink. He's not going to get you to smoke. Or we, we, we feel like we're above that. That's so obvious uh -huh. for most people. Uh -huh. Let me put a caveat there. For most yes. folks, we understand. Okay. Can't uh -huh. do that. He told me we couldn't do it. We understand I can't have a wife and a girlfriend too. That's we right. understand that. Right. There is no sharing right. in our relationship Amen. when it comes to those. That's we right. got that. But if I can get you to retire in place, right. I have castrated you. Yes. I have caused you to be the least effective, and it doesn't matter. You can go all you want. I already did cut the legs from up from under. So Paul says, let us not be ignorant yes. of his devices, right. lest we should he get an advantage. Yes. So the, you think the enemy is not after you? Yes, he is. You better rethink that again. Already, and if you've got something to offer, the devil is after you. That's why I say, Lord, you know, help me to make this journey somehow. Yes, sir. I realize the devil on my track. Doesn't matter what position you hold, he does not care about your license or your calling to God. He does not care about your gift. Y'all don't hear me this morning. He's after you, and we've got to be cognizant of the fact that he's trying to destroy you. 
Glory to God. And then I read. So, so if you got, and I know I got something to offer, and I believe you got something to offer yes, too. It's going to be hard to shut my mouth, amen, because I feel like I got something to offer. Uh -huh. But I, because I know that I've got to be watchful and very prayerful because I know the enemy is looking for any, because we deal with an adversary that's walking, seeking whom he may devour. Yes, All he needs is an avenue. Yes. And if I can retire in place, if I can quiet, quit, nobody knows I've already quit. Hallelujah. Right. But the enemy is so good. He is so good. I, it's my exposure day. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to give him any prop, but the enemy is so good at his job. Yes. He is a deceiver. Yes, sir. He is the adversary. Uh -huh. It's a legal term. Uh -huh. That is what he does. Yes. And he's good at it. Watch this. Now, I ask myself the question, what was Lucifer doing, doing telling those angels that followed him to convince them to follow him? Yes, sir. What was he telling them, brother? He had to be very convincing very. to convince the angel that's yeah. up there saying, holy, 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 oh, God. Lord God Almighty. Yeah. But think about it for a moment. They were in heaven with God. Worshiping around the throne, and here comes Lucifer, and he convinces one third, one third. of the angelic host to follow him. Amen. He had to be very convinced. Amen. They was already with God, and here comes that devil. You don't want to hear me today. They rebelled against the authority of God. Mm -hmm. He had to be awfully convincing. Yeah. He tricked the angels and caused them to lose their first estate. Yes, sir. If you don't believe it, look at Jude, the first chapter, verse 6, and it we talks see. about that. Yes, Just as a reminder, and the angels, that's that fallen group that yes, followed sir. Satan uh -huh. in verse 6, uh -huh. that were, that were, that were, which kept not their first estate. Uh -huh. They left a good atmosphere. Yes, sir. They left, brother, worshiping and praising God. How better can it get? My God. But they left their first estate. That's what it says. Left, but left their own habitation. Yes, sir. He that reserved, that had been reserving everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of that great day. Yes, sir. God said, I'm going to judge them. Yes, sir. Because they listened to the devil. Yes, sir. So guess what? Mm. If he was able to trick the angels, I know he can treat you. Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. They was up there flapping. Y'all looking at me strange. Right. And we think we're sometimes so smart, but devil say, yeah, I'm going to show you how smart you are yes. and how you think you've got to figure it out because if I can get one third of this angelic hope to follow me, you're really not no match by and in of yourself. That's, right. That's why we need God. Yes, sir. We need a God mind. Devil say, we need a God mind. Yes. They were in heaven. They had it made. Why would they risk losing everything? Uh -huh. We've got to take that into consideration when we look that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Uh -huh. Satan took advantage of them and they listened to him. Uh -huh. So tell yourself, don't look at him. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to the oh, devil. Oh, don't listen to him. He's going to wreck you. If you let him ride, he's going to want to drive. Right. And if you let him drive, guess what? He'll wreck your life. life. That's, right. That's what they told me, mother. And I took that into account. Mm -hmm. Don't let the enemy ride. Because if you let him ride, he's going to want to drive. Yes. He always a moving to move into a position to control and to take advantage of you. I think a hand clap ought to go yes. right here. I think I'm talking better than y'all this morning. Yes. <laughs> but I'm working on it. Look at the back there. I'm working on it. Yes. Second Corinthians 4, verses 3 through 4. But if our gospel be here, yes. it is here to them which are lost, yes. in whom the God of this world yes. has blinded the mind. Hallelujah, of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, yes, should shine unto them. Mm. Now, this is my key verse I'm talking today, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four, uh, six through seven. Mm. Be careful for nothing. Yes. And this is Philippians 4, yes, verses sir. six through seven. But in everything by prayer yes. and supplication with thanksgiving, mm. let your requests be made known unto God. Yes, sir. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, hallelujah, which hath it all understanding, all right. shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well. Help me say, God, keep my mind. God, God keep, keep my mind. mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Keep my mind. Yeah. Get your mind straight. Yeah. Get your focus straight. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let God speak to your mind. 
do whatever you do, we sang the song of you months ago, whatever you do, do with a heavenly mind. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, do it with a heavenly mind. Mm. And that way you won't miss out on what God has for you. So we got to get our minds straight. And what are we uh, confessing and what are we thinking about? Note this, a plane cannot land. And I've used this analogy before until the runway is clear. Some of the blessings and things that God wants to fulfill in your life, my brother and sister, sometime will be inadvertently put on hold. Uh -huh. It'll be held up or it'll be stuck in the air because the environment of your mind, uh -huh. hallelujah, and your inability to clear the one way uh -huh. have hindered your delivery of the blessing uh -huh. that God has for you. Uh -huh. The landing strip is your mind and your heart. I want you to write that down because that's where that's where the, the rubble meets the road in our minds. If we can overcome that deal and overcome that spirit that oppresses our mind, because we're we're in the city of our thoughts 95% of the time, even in our subconscious state, we're still dealing with our mind, aren't we? Yes. Because we're dreaming dreams and thinking things by which before we even went to sleep, you had on your mind. Yes. And it continues oftentimes even into your thought life. So you got to even be careful how you think. Amen. Because as a man thinketh, and I'm still in the mind, in his heart, in his heart so is he. So we've got to be careful of how we judge our thoughts. So he torments your mind with negative thoughts and subtle subjection. He does that. That's what he's good at. And I'm trying to expose the tactics of the enemy. Folks lack proper balance in their lives. And I'm going back to the balance thing. We don't have proper balance Amen. in our lives, and it causes a focus factor. Amen. Most, most folk is all or nothing. We go in one direction, and we just go hard in that direction, not considering what else is being impacted by the direction that we have chosen. Yes. This takes discipline. Help me say, Lord, give me discipline. Oh my God, you fail to get fed spiritually, but doing all the things that you want to do in which the majority of them is designed to distract you and not to help you, but to keep you weak and stunted. Yes. That's what the enemy's job is. Y'all with me? Yes. Your priorities have shifted oftentimes. And this is to the church in general, from the top to the bottom. It does it to leaders as well. Yes. So don't feel like you're in a class by yourself. Right. It happened. That is his tactic. That's, That's right. how he operates. Right. But God is no longer at the center of our lives. Right. Now watch this. If you accept or receive the and thought the thoughts and suggestions from the devil, you will have to him give him the right to enter the door. Right. If you do not accept that thought or close the door, you send him packing. You resist the devil. And what does the Bible say? He will flee. But let me put that first verse. To submit yourself unto God. Yes. And then it says resist. Yes. But we've got to first submit ourselves to yes. God. I'm in the book today. I'm not going, I don't yes. have much else to offer but what the word says about yes. it. So now one thought can hold you hostage for the balance. And I've mentioned this before of your life. So now watch what you say. And of course, watch your thoughts. Watch what you say and watch your thoughts. Because your thoughts become words. And y'all, you have broke this down before, and I think it bad repeated. And watch your words, because they become actions, don't they? Yes. Yes. And you got to watch your actions. They become habits. Uh -huh. And watch your habits, because they become your character. That's right. And you got to watch your character, because it becomes your destiny. Uh -huh. But I don't know about you, but I'm determined to make it yes. all the way. All right. Put your hand on yourself and say, I'm determined to make it all the way. So I had to come up with an end. What is your end game? Well, how do you expect for this to end for you? Mm. The energy and the effort that we spend on things that add no value to our destiny are amazing. Yep. How we spend that type of it. And they've got games and things that can distract you for all day long. Yes, sir. I've heard people that are in therapy now yep. trying to trying to get delivered from the from the internet demon. Yep. Yep. And from all of those other things that can take all of the energy out of their lives during right, the course of a right. day. Uh -huh. Hallelujah, man. But remember this, and I keep going back to it. I did this not an original thought of mine, but remember that your energy flows where your attention goes. Yes. And I keep putting that out there. Your energy flows where your attention goes. So if you're putting your attention on things that are of no value, if you're putting your things attention to things that doesn't really matter much, right. then that's where most of your strength goes. Yeah. And when the large problem come up, you're already drained. Uh -huh. yeah. And the enemy already knows that. So if I can drain you back here, when you get up to this point, yes, you're sir. already tired. 
Amen. All right. And you wonder why folk give up. Amen. You wonder why folk are spending a lot of couch time. Right. Y'all right. don't get me because now I'm determined that we're spending a lot of, we're putting a lot of emphasis on wellness and I'm for that. Don't misunderstand me. Uh -huh. But we can't put all of our eggs in that basket. Amen. Right. Some stuff you just need to be delivered from. Yes. That's right. That's right. No couch time. They didn't give us all the couch time. Right. My wife and I be talking as we were driving down the highway. I said, I don't ever remember them sitting because we, first of all, didn't have the money to go to couch time. Amen. If it didn't happen in prayer, they left what they told us, mother, you pray and trust God and God is going to deliver you. Yes, and we put our trust in God. Yes. And guess what? God delivered us. Yes. No couch time. Yes. <laughs> Holy Ghost time. Some neology time. Folk are not praying like they used to pray. Right. Somebody sung the song, Oh Zion, what's the matter now? Yeah. You don't pray like you used to pray. What's the matter now? Don't fast like you, y'all not talking about like you. Don't fast like you used to fast. What's the matter now? Right. Didn't have all of the issues that we have now. Not to say they were non-existent, but we dealt with them differently, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And I keep saying that life is 90% what happens to us. Uh, not 90% what happens to us, but 10% of how we respond to yeah. it. So it's our response. I think I did it backwards, yeah. but it's 10% of how we, what happens to us, and 90% of how we respond to it. Yeah. Yeah. So look at somebody and say, it's your focus. It's your focus. You focus on the negative things that I look, I use my heart as an example. On yesterday, I said, did you hear how she was talking? She said, I'm going to fight the devil until I die. She uh, said, I feel like fighting right now. I said, I know. Well, <laughs> oh, uh, I said, you're 100 years old. Oh, my God. I said, but I'm still fighting. Lord Jesus. I said, I like that. I said, uh -huh. I'm going to take that for myself. I'm still fighting. So I'm going to fight until I die. I'm on the battlefield. What we used to say in the song? I'm on the battlefield until I die. Hallelujah. I'm going to fight until I die. And I keep saying the fact that if you want to go through life, if you're going to experience this life, you're going to have to fight. Yes, sir. I'm not talking in a physical sense, but I'm talking mentally. you got to fight through all of the discouragement. you got to fight to get your mind right. Y'all with me this morning? Because the devil working on your mind. Hallelujah. Telling you to give up and telling you to quit. Telling them you nobody loves you. God doesn't even love you either. Uh, the devil is a lie. Hallelujah. The devil is a lie. God does love you. He's concerned about you. He wants you to succeed. But you can't go through life always down and never up. you got to change your focus. Come and say it's a focus factor. Hallelujah. you got to know that you get what you really want in life. You need to clear goals that has purpose and meaning to it. Just not through happenstance. Where focus goes, energy flows. In essence, we give life and power to whatever we focus on. So if it's up for something positive and we want our children to succeed and we're praying for them, are they going to make some mistakes? You better believe they're going to make some mistakes. But does that mean that you stop praying for them? No. You still got to concentrate and focus your factor on what they shall be. And it does not yet appear of what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's our focus. And therefore, it is imperative to be extremely mindful of what you decide to focus on. Have crystal clear vision. Develop a laser focus. And y'all seen these things. I've measured. I've had some uh, rules and things I used to use when I, in my work outside of the church. And I use them. Now they got lasers that don't miss. That's right. Then you can stand on the other side of the building. All you got to do is shoot the beam across it. there. It. It'll tell you exactly. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It'll tell you without stepping off anything, it'll tell you how far you are from that next object. And then let it say, what do you get that from? I say, that, that's what's on the market now. Instead of bringing out the ruler, I just bring out the laser. That's it. Uh -huh. that's it. That's and shoot the laser. So that's how our focus right. has to be. Right. Look at somebody and say, that's how your focus got to be. That's how your focus got to be. We need to eliminate all the negative headspace. Mm -hmm. uh, the dark side. That is why mental illness is a major issue in our day. Both in the church yes. and outside yeah, of the church. That's right. that's right. Because we don't have focus. Mm. And we need to refocus our focus. Yes, sir. So when we the choices that you make today will determine, and I'm about to finish in a few yes, moments, but the you choices know. that you make today will determine where you yes, reach tomorrow. Yes, you gotta plan, you gotta put forth an effort. 
Uh, smart people are always asking, what do I need to do today to bring about the kind of life I desire for tomorrow? Mm. That's what smart people ask themselves. Uh -huh. And look at somebody, and I say, I'm trying to be smart now. Be Not smart. in the sense of knowing more than anybody else, but mm. I'm trying to ask the right kind of question right. that's going to get me to where I need to be. Now, when I look at the rich young ruler and I abuse him, he was smart because he asked Jesus in St. Matthew, the 19th chapter, didn't he? Uh -huh. Verse 16 through 20 feet, he says, Master, what good thing, what today uh -huh. shall I do that I have, might have eternal life? Uh -huh. He had a lot of things, but he took the time and was smart enough to say, what do I need to do? And I've asked myself, what do I need to do now to prepare myself for tomorrow? All right. He says, what do I need to do today that I might have eternal life? Jesus told him, keep the commandments. Y'all yeah. know the story, oh, don't yeah. you? He been smart, says, which commandments, uh -huh. Do you want me to keep? I say, see, he's a law. He's trying to be smart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which one? Jesus says, Thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Right. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Right. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Him being a good Jewish boy had kept these from his youth done. Uh -huh. So he being smart, he said, now, I have kept these from my youth up. What do I yet lack? What lack I yet? Is that what the King James says? Yeah. Jesus says, go sell that thou have and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. That's what he told him. And Jesus' teaching was uh, of the importance of love here on earth. But when the young man heard this about selling his possessions, he had a problem, didn't he? Yes. For he did not want to part from them. Yes. For he had, the Bible says, great possession. But at least he was smart enough to ask. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got to be smart enough to ask. Lord, what lack I yet? All right. I pay my tithes. I come to church. I try to do all that I possibly can do. What lack I yet? Why, what do I need to do for my future? And what are you asking God for? And I underlined that for myself. What am I asking God for? And I'm asking God for a lot of things. Yes. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. Right. We don't, we're not inconveniencing God when we ask him for things. Y'all know that, right? That's right. That's right? He's not disturbed. He doesn't have a nervous problem. And he's not overwhelmed like we get. Right. Because he can handle. Cast our cares upon the Lord. Yes. And cast our burdens upon the Lord because he cares for us. Yes. And not just for you, but the entire world. He got the whole world, somebody say, in his hand. So he's not disturbed. He's not overwhelmed by your small request. I thought a hand clap ought to go down because God is not overwhelmed by our desire. Glory to God. But we've got to know what we're asking God for. Right. We have not because we have not. The power of God can break the shackles off your mind. Yeah. You have the power to walk in victory and win this fight for your life. Help me say it's a fight for your life. Fight for your life. Hallelujah. You got a plan. You got to refocus your focus. But it's a fight for your it's life. Yeah. And we're in the last quarter. Yeah. The enemy has placed such a burden and put, 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 put pressure on you at this last stage in your life and you're asking yourself what is going on is but he knows that you're close to the end, you're close to your goal you're close to accomplishing that which God has placed, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but now it's time to refocus your focus it's right, you're right there the Bible says, you, somebody said that you're next in line for the blessing and I put my hand on myself I'm next in line I'm next in line Hallelujah. I'm going to give all what God has for me. I'm looking for a blessing. I'm looking for a miracle in my job, in my situation, in my home, in the church. I'm looking for a blessing. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise in the Lord. Stop, stop living beneath your privilege. The devil is alive. I want to let him know the state of the God of this world, how it blinds the mind of people. But because they choose not to believe, resulting in an inability to see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I see it unfolding in my life. How important it is for that, that gospel, the good news that we want to share with other people. And we were writing the other night in some of the things that they wanted us to share with others that this is what God wants us to do. We are to make God so attractive to the world that they are drawn to the God that we worship. All right. 
So if I can't make him attractive, if I can make him un, un, unlikely to be a part of what they want to do, they're not going to come. Amen. So he's placed us here for a reason. Amen. To make holiness attractive. Amen. To make living right attractive. Amen. And the nations will see the difference that it made in our life, and they're going to want to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. So the enemy will have you focus on the wrong thing. Yes. Hallelujah. But we want to refocus. Help me say we got to refocus. Glory yes. to God. Uh, because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yes. Let this mind be in you. And that's the Philippians part that I was trying to remember mm -hmm. earlier this morning. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind did Jesus have? Was to do the will of his father. That's what he came here to do. Yes. What kind of mind should we have to do the will of our father? Yes. Saints, we have to go back to the Bible. Yes. And that is what's so desperately needed now, our elder. Mm -hmm. We got to go back to what the Bible says. All right, yeah. We hear all of these other voices out there, and there are many yes, voices, sir. the political and economically. There are things that are being said now that are almost intimidating folks. Yes, and some folks don't even want to go outside no more. Mm -hmm. Don't even want to leave the safety of their homes yes, anymore. Sir because they're intimidated by all what's going on. Right. But I say, I'm taking the Lord with me everywhere I go. Yeah. I'm not going to stop until God says it's time to stop. Y'all right. don't hear me this morning. Yeah. Amen. There are viruses and things that are out there that yet people are yet getting sick. Right. But I say, now, if as far as me and my house, I'm not claiming any of that. Amen. 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 That's the faith. That's how my faith goes. Right. And I think that should be the faith of those that saint that was once delivered unto the saint. Yeah. The faith of that mindset that you can just, you can Go the extra mile of the way. You don't have to succumb to all of the pressures that's going on. Folk losing their mind behind the simple thing. Y'all don't hear me this morning. Folk are going off the deep end off of something that's very, uh, you know, irrelevant. Uh -huh. And they lose it because they're concentrating their focus on that negative thing. Right. But I'm keeping my mind. I said, Lord, keep my mind. Keep my mind. Glory to God. And I believe that that was the prayer of uh, well, Thomas, Elder Simeon Thomas. Yeah. My wife always reminds me. She said, I never will forget that even in his advanced age, up in his late in the 80s, he said, Lord, keep my right mind. Yes, sir. Help me to keep my right mind. Yeah. Because dementia is out there, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I told my wife the other day, I'm not trying to get into a demented state, and we're going into that. Yeah. Some people that's going, it's, it's sometimes hereditary. Right. There are other issues that goes into that right. part, too. Right. But I say, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm keeping my right mind. Right. I'm going to do the, I'm gonna do the pop thing. Right. Lord, that's my prayer. Help me keep my right mind. Y'all hear me today? Go with your right mind. You can serve God. Hallelujah. Yes, Without your right mind, you can't really serve God. So, God, keep my mind. Stay on you. Because you will keep me in perfect peace. Whose mind is staying on you. Glory to God. So I'm saying, God, keep my mind. Keep my mind, Lord. Yes, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We've got to go back to asking God to keep our mind. Yes. Because the enemy is trying to attack your mind every way he possibly can. Oh, and we got to make sure that we're with the heavenly mind and get your mind right. Want something from God. Stop just beating the air. But get serious about your relationship with the Lord. Uh -huh. And sometimes we might have to choose the short-term pain for the long-term gain. Oh Help me say sometimes, sometimes. you got to choose the short-term pain short -term for the long-term gain. The long -term they had to go through some temptations. They had to go through some inconvenient situations. You may have to go through being overlooked. And sometimes we do get overlooked. Yes, and it doesn't feel good. Y'all know it doesn't. Yes, to be overlooked because we often want to blow our own horn. Yes. And we have to resist the urge sometimes yes. because we have to learn to let the Lord fight our battle. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes there are some battles that you're going to have to undertake. Yes. But then there are some battles that only God can undertake. Yes. You cannot change somebody else's mind and opinion of you. Y'all listening to me. Yes. But you got to keep your mind focused on the Lord. And when you have to go through that short-term pain, God knows it's going to bless you for a long term. We ought to give God praise for that. Lord, you got to go. You got to make the hard choices to do that which is right. I might have to suffer for a little while, but it will be worth it all. Hallelujah. Lord, help me to refocus my focus and stop chasing after the wrong thing. Yes, sir. I believe that God will help us. We're going to be better, aren't we? Yes, sir. It's not going to always be this way. Yes, Hallelujah. It's going to be different this time. Yes, 
Glory to God. I was talking, and I'm going to let you go. We were standing, talking to a young man the other day, and I said, listen, man, and he had told me about some of the failures that he had had, but I said, well, don't give up. You're yet young. You can yet make it. I said, but this time it's going to be different. All right. and he looked at me. He said, what do you mean? I said, this time, when you try, it's going to be different. All right. And tell somebody it's going to be different this time because I've refocused my focus. I already realized what I messed up last time, and I'm not making the same mistake no more. But I've changed my mind. Our minds are changing. Our focus may seem difficult, but it is necessary. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Glory to God. And if you're in church where you are always comfortable and are not being challenged to grow, you are not being changed. Amen. And that's what we're about, Mother. We're about changing folk, yes. helping them to be the better version of themselves uh -huh. than they were before. Yes. And while you're standing, and those of you that are listening to me through Facebook, I want you to place your hand on whatever medium you may have as a point of contact and as an act of faith. Uh -huh. Faith calling those things that be not as though they were. Yes, but as we look forward with eyes and we focus our focus, I'm trusting God that God's going to change it, that this time is going to be different. Yes, this time I will not allow the enemy to cause me to live here. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, if this time is what God has for me, I'm not going to be distracted by what the enemy puts before me because he knows what you like. Yes, right. And sometimes he'll put it right there in right your there. face. And say, choose you this day. Hallelujah, whom you will serve. Yes, Hallelujah. I pray that God will give you the strength and he will give you the courage yes. to make the right decision. Yes. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, uh -huh. which you have shown toward this people, in that you have ministered unto the saints and you do minister. Uh -huh. But God has a way of making it up to you. Yes. And I'm a living, hallelujah, I'm a living witness yes. that God will make it up to you. Yes, will. He'll give you what you need. Just what you need in the moment. Come on, give God some praise and give a leader. God have a way of making it up to you. Good God Almighty. And once you begin to think right, you move in the right direction of your plan. Move in the right direction of your plan. Whatever it is that you're praying for, my brother, my sister, move in that direction. Glory to God. Make the step. And God knows if you make the first step, God will make two. Hallelujah. Yes, what he's done for others, he'll do the very same for you. He is no respect of person. Hallelujah. And we give him the praise. And we give him the glory. And we give him the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to refocus my focus. Thank you, Lord, for the focus factor. Thank you, Lord. Help me to think of what matters most. Help me, Lord. Help me today. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. I need your help and I need your strength. Rebuke the adversary of our soul. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for what you've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. Look at us now, one by one, and name by name. You know our desire. God, you know is what we want to do is right. And God, help us to move in that direction. Give us the strength and the courage and the anointing of the Holy Ghost to help motivate us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keep our minds stay on you. Hallelujah, because we trusted in you. And Lord, we bless you with praise because we count it done today. We declare it and declare it. We put it in the atmosphere that you're moving on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Prayers are not in vain. Thank you, Lord. You're helping us. We don't even know you're helping us. You're helping us, Lord. So we focus our focus. And we bless you and we praise you now. And we do thank you for so doing. This we do declare in Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. Glory to God. We used to sing this song, Lord, keep my mind while I run this race. 